10 people who miraculously evaded death. Some people just have all the luck, or whatever you may call it. While it's debatable, considering the subject in question, it certainly applies in some way or the other to all the people on this list. Call it fate, call it luck, or divine intervention. But there has been a whole lot of people over the years who have cheated death in the weirdest impossible ways, be it hangings, lethal injections, or a nine-man firing squad. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we'll be talking about 10 people who miraculously evaded death. And without wasting much of our time, let's hop into it. Anne Green. The 1600s weren't exactly a good time for females, as it is evident from the case of Anne Green, an English domestic servant who was impregnated by her master's grandson. To cut the long story short, the child was still born. She tried to hide it away, but was caught and was convicted of infanticide in 1650 and sentenced to death by hanging. After she was hanged extremely violently, may I add, that the doctor still found a pulse and proceeded to pull out all the medieval stops possible, including giving her a tobacco smoke enema. She recovered fully, was declared innocent by the hand of their god. She got married and settled down with her kids. She even kept her coffin as a souvenir. Zoleika Katkoda. Zoleika Katkoda was arrested and charged with engaging in sexual relations outside marriage and immediately condemned to death by decree of the religious magistrate Hakem Shar. Furthermore, the Friday prayer leader of Ali Abad village, a man named Khalif Zadeh, was also involved in condemning Katkoda to death. On that same day, the local Pastaran Basijis and other Hezbollahis buried her from the waist down in a ditch and began stoning her. One such supporter has been identified as Sharif Fagle. The stoning prompted such a reaction among the village inhabitants that they were forced to stop the stoning and immediately take her body to the Bukhan hospital. Zoleika Kalkoda's head and face were seriously wounded. As the news of the stoning spread, it incited such disapproval among the people of the city and villages of Bukhan that local representatives and the religious magistrate were forced to promise to give Zoleika Katkoda amnesty if she survives. However, according to the latest reports, there is concern that despite the reports of her amnesty, Zoleika Katkoda might be sentenced to a second stoning. John Babakom Lee. Lee's trial in February 1885 resulted in the death penalty. On the day of his execution, the scaffold was tested. A white cap was put over Lee's head, followed by the noose. Following prayers, the signal was given and the lever pulled, but the trap door beneath Lee's feet failed to open. Water stamped on it, but it still did not budge. The mechanism was tested again and found to have been working perfectly. For a second time though, Lee stood on the trap door and again, the lever was pulled and incredibly, the trap door failed to open. A carpenter was fetched and some work was done and once again, the mechanism was tested and found to be working. For the third time, Lee was placed over the trap door and for the third time, the lever was pulled and for the third time, the mechanism failed. Lee was taken away and under English law could not be put on the scaffold anymore. Instead, he was sent to prison. After serving a long sentence, he was released. The incident of the botched execution caused a sensation and added even more to the fever pitch interest in the case. Some believed that Lee's mother, who was rumored to dabble in witchcraft, had put a spell on the scaffold, causing it to fail. Wenceslao Mogel. Wenceslao Mogel was a Mexican who was captured on March 18, 1915, suspected of taking part in the Mexican Revolution. He was sentenced to death without a trial and was shot eight to nine times by a firing squad in the body and received the coup de grace or one final shot to the head point 
blank range to ensure death. Stories differ as to how he survived. Some sources state that the next day, Mogel was found unconscious among the dead bodies of his comrades. He was given medical attention and recovered. Others state that he crawled away to the church of St. James Apostle three blocks away from where a church member found him and took him home until he recuperated. He was given the nickname El Fusilado, meaning the executed one. He appeared on the Ripley's Believe It or Not radio show on July 16, 1937. The British group Chumbawamba wrote a song telling Wenceslao's story. William Duell. Duell was hanged for rape and murder. He lost consciousness on the gallows and was taken for dead. But a few hours later, he revived whilst being prepared for dissection by medical students. The authorities took pity on him and commuted, or reduced, his sentence to one of transportation exiles to North America. Now this was a time of great developments in the understanding of medicine, in part due to the practice of training medical students through the dissection of dead bodies. There were strongly religious and cultural prejudices against dissection, which made dead bodies difficult to seek out for this purpose. As a result, executed criminals were regularly provided to medical training colleges. Romel Broom. Romel Broom was born on June 4, 1956. He is an American man who was convicted of murder, kidnapping, and rape. He was convicted in 1984 for abducting and killing. In 2003, Broom accepted a suggestion from the state of Ohio for a DNA test to prove his innocence. However, the test results did not exonerate him. The clemency hearing concluded that the DNA report doesn't indicate a match, but it does indicate that the likelihood of Broom being the donor is one in 2.3 million. Otherwise stated, eight or nine other black males within the country would have an equivalent profile. Broom also has convictions for robbery, aggravated robbery, and four counts of kidnapping a son. He was also convicted during a separate incident of raping a daughter. John Half Hanged Smith. Through the crimes committed by this man weren't marked with particular atrocity, nor his life sufficiently remarkable for an area in these volumes, yet the circumstances attending his fate at the place of execution are perhaps more singular than any we may need to record. Begins the new gate calendar, and one can about see our Marlowe setting light to his tobacco as he makes able to unspool a very satisfying yarn. After Smith dangled quarter hour today at Tyburn, the gang at his hanging began calling for a reprieve. One gets the impression our narrator could also be alighting during a sentence quite unruly affair. That the malefactor was cut down, we could guess, but after a mere 15 minutes? Did the gang overpower the sentries, or were the officers of the law simply during a Christmas spirit? Whether or not Smith's luck was dumb, they did cut him down and did revive him. Joseph Samuel, transported to Australia in 1801 for theft. Joseph Samuel was a part of a cohort of Sydney Cove convicts who, on the night of August 25th or 26th, burgled a house. The band was amazed by Constable Joseph Luker himself, who is a former convict. Whatever was at hand, recovered with Luker's broken body at morning's light, were a bloodied wheelbarrow wheel, and therefore the hilt of Luker's own cutlass buried in his brains. Luker was the primary policeman killed on duty in Australia, and his name is often found on the country's National Police Memorial. But the order of the day in 1803 was a special kind of memorial. Avenging heaven directs the hand of justice, and therefore the manes of the deceased inspires us with indignation and resentment. The Sydney Gazette fulminated, the need to chop a deal for Crown's evidence with one among Samuel's compatriots eventually meant that Samuel was the sole one in touch with the vengeance of Luker's manes. Willie Francis. Now this case has racial bias written everywhere on it. Willie Francis was 16 years old when he was charged with the murder of a 
drugstore owner in St. Martinville, Louisiana. His trial was a sham and he was sentenced to death by a chair. In 1946, during his execution, witnesses reported hearing the teenager scream, take it off, take it off, let me breathe, I'm not dying. And therefore, the execution failed because of the chair being improperly found out. Even though he appealed against it and didn't want it, Willie was executed a year after cheating certain death. Half hanged Maggie Dickinson. Maggie was sentenced to hang on the 2nd of September, 1724 at Edinburgh for infanticide. She had an illegitimate child, which is said to have been stillborn. But women's rights in the 1700s, like I pointed out before, weren't exactly very reassuring. When she was hanged, her body remained suspended for over 30 minutes. However, while her body was being taken away in a coffin, she started making noises and it turned out she had somehow survived. She was granted a full pardon after this spectacle and there's even a pub in her name. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, share, and subscribe. We'll be seeing you later. Peace.